So, Tony, are you excited about your new show? Jim, I am so excited about the Dream Big Show. I mean, literally, it was a dream and a vision of mine to have my own show, and I can't believe that the Dream Big Show is happening, and I'm the host. It's going to be amazing. So tell me, what is the Dream Big Show? Listen, the Dream Big Show is all about giving opportunity. Listen, but there's some who've already made it to the top, some right in the middle, and some even getting started. But it's all about the dream and making those dreams come true. The show is going to be amazing. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for the Dream Big Show, Tony Jackson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you are amazing today. And welcome to the Dream Big Show. Yes, I am happy that you joined me today. It's going to be a great show. I'm so excited to be chatting today with the music director to the stars, Mr. Adam Blackstone. And we're gonna get into some real talk. We're gonna find out so much about Adam. I'm so excited about that, yes. But can we first talk about a few things that I just want to kind of get off my chest, like some church topics. Is that cool? I mean, church topics, all right? So COVID-19 is still here. I mean, I need everybody to be as safe as possible. Get your shots, your boosters, wear your mask, but you can go back to church now. I'm just saying. Church folks are still using the same excuse. You know, it's the COVID excuse. I mean, really. I was out to dinner with my wife, and sister, I don't know, came up to me with no mask. She gave me a hug, gave me a, you know, a church kiss, and told me she had just come back from vacation. She said, you know, she had gone to some amazing concerts, uh, some awesome restaurants. But when I said to her, I missed you at church. She said, oh, I'm not ready to go back to church yet. COVID is still rampant. I'm just saying. I mean, really? <laughs> well, I, listen, I had to go to Walmart. And uh, they said it's packed in Walmart. Everybody knows it's still packed in Walmart. And um, I needed to get some vegetable oil. So I went over there, and um, I saw someone uh, that I knew from the church. And I said, hey, uh, don't forget about Bible study. And they were like, oh, you know, COVID is still rampant. I can't come to Bible study, but they were at Walmart, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I understand. I mean, churches still want to keep people for three hours and 36 minutes. And then they say, you don't have anywhere to go. I mean, you know? <laughs> I do have somewhere to go, you know. We get there at 9.30 a.m., they don't feed you any breakfast, you know. You're still there at 12.30. They don't feed you any lunch. <laughs> then on communion Sunday, you know, they give you the communion. They say, hey, that's dinner, you know. <laughs> Got the food, crap your mind. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you're getting a headache from not eating. I mean, we're there all day. <laughs> but when it's time for preaching and people are ready to go, because we've been there two and a half hours, Oh, now you want to get up and leave. Well, we've been ready to leave like three hours ago. I mean, I still love church. But, you know, there's a lot of fluff that happens, isn't there? Does anybody get tired of actual church fluff stuff? Better known as announcements for no reason, you know, just stuff we don't need to hear. Uh, how about this one? Tuesday... The water bottle ministry will be traveling to Walmart to pick up water if anybody wants to go along. I mean, yeah, we didn't need to know that, you know? People, listen, we need uh, volunteers to push the carts, uh, wait in line, and pack the water up. We need to know about that. No, you know? Oh, how about this one? On Saturday, August 12th, 
2023, we will be having a double Dutch contest for the Senior Saints. <laughs> okay, all right. I guess I want to see the Senior Saints do double Dutch. <laughs> Start practicing with your grandparents now, you know? Make sure you get them some sneakers from Walmart. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah, you know, anybody remember uh, the devotional services before church? I mean, now most churches call it praise and worship, but I'm just saying, let the deacons lead. You know, I, I get it. Let them pray, read the scripture, welcome the people, lead testimonies, but don't let them lead the song. <laughs> I'm just saying, everybody has their gift, right? Leave the singing to the praise team. You know, after all, there is no key of J on the keyboard. <laughs> but you know, the Bible does say make a joyful noise. That's pretty much what they're doing. Making a lot of noise. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get off the church topics for a bit. And how about a little bit on politics? And the city of Trenton mayor, Reed Gussiora, they say, is doing a great job as the new mayor. And I hear there's not as many people running for mayor this time around. Hmm. There's only like 68 people <laughs> running for mayor. <laughs> oh my goodness, so let's just escape that too, all right? And let's get to our special guest that I'm so excited to have on the Dream Big Show. Please help me welcome Mr. Adam Blackstone. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited to have you here, Mr. Adam Blackstone. Thank you for having me, Doc. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love you, man. Yes, sir. Uh, where did you fly in from? Where are you coming from? I'm just coming from L.A., then New Orleans, and then straight here. Um, this set is amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. You've been an inspiration to me and so all of our family and city. But uh, I had to come to the Dream Big show you, to make sure it was this, good. Do, <laughs> do you know who this is? Oh, I'm so man. excited to have my super duper music director to the stars, Mr. Adam Blackstone here. Man, I'm just glad that you said yes to your uncle. I mean, of I course. still don't take it for granted that you're sitting here on the Dream Big show. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. I wouldn't have missed it. I'm so excited, man. Let's just jump right into it. Yes. You are a family man. Absolutely a husband and a father. Tell me what that's like for you. Yeah, I mean, that that's all about legacy for me. Everything I do is for them. Um, I've been, you know, pushed to the max, I think, um, by being a family man and seeing um, how much, you know, inspiration I can give to my children uh, because I'm inspired by family and yeah. even my wife. And, and it helps to... Um, just give a, a greater sense of purpose. Absolutely. Um, I'm blessed to have the job that I have to do music full time, but at the end of the day, it turns into a job and it's mm -hmm. still a job, but Absolutely. you have that drive to keep going and go to new levels and go to new heights because of family and yes. because of legacy and because of um, the things that matter most, which is you know my children and my family. So. It's 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 a constant struggle. Yeah. You know, we be in the studio and I'm like, the babies <laughs> come in and. You know, my, my son is a studio rat, and he, he knows everybody through Zoom nowadays yeah. as well. And um, I'm making it okay for them to be a part of the process. That's too. awesome. You know what I mean? I think that's something that we have to do in this generation, especially with technology. We've gone through a pandemic where we didn't have to be in each other's faces at right, work. Right, right. So right. family is a big part of that culture now online and yes. Zooming and virtual meetings Absolutely. and stuff like that. So um, they know what I do and they know how serious I take it, but they also, I make sure that they know I'm doing it for them. Yeah, and you know? at the same time, you, you, you're you balancing, especially home, yes. you know, being the music director and working in the studio and still being daddy. They, they don't care that uh, <laughs> Miss Alicia Keys calls or uh, Uncle Justin Timberlake or anything like that. Like, it's like uh, my daughter has to go to sleep at 8.30. <laughs> Let me put her down. Or I have to feed the kids, or I have to, you know, make sure everybody's picked up on time and stuff like that. So yes. it's a 
it's like it's a it's a balancing act for sure. But I'm built for it. This is what I pray for yes. more than anything yes. to uh, have fruit of my of my of my loins and yes. um i'm excited that they're here awesome man yep. i just want to say you're you're a great dad and and Thank i'm you. just honored to be your kid godfather Listen, you, Listen, help, I'm you you and i keisha help us so much <laughs> anytime we get in the bind i say i gotta call uncle tony he gonna, he gonna and then my kids get so excited I love when it. i say uncle tony's coming to pick you up or yeah. uncle tony's gonna come spend the time with you and you know they get the like they boss us around, they get to boss you. That's around. right. That's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Play Legos and and yeah. all of that stuff. So it's it's a blessed our, you know, even how we grew up, our family structure, um, the support system that we have Absolutely. has meant everything. And I feel it more now than ever. Where it's like we need help, whether that's my mother come in or my mother in law, yes. and you and the other godparents, like really helping yes. raise the village. It takes, a, village, it takes yeah. a huge village yes, for sir. sure. That's 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 not uh, to be taken lightly yes, at sir. all. Yes, sir. Well, congratulations, man. I don't know Thank if you. there's any more coming, but you know. No, no, we done. <laughs> we done. We got the blessing of the two. Yeah. We are, no, we are no, all good. Adam Junior and Adia Gladys. I'm so excited. Yes, They're amazing absolutely. kids, man. But listen, you're rocking the BBE hat. That's it. That's it. This it's, is my this is my trust special hat. Oh, too. it's got the trust logo. Yeah, I love that. that. I love it. Listen, I mean, for those of you who don't know, listen, BBE, Basic Black Entertainment, is actually the music mecca to the stars. So, Adam, tell us more about BBE. What is BBE all about? Yes, Basic Black Entertainment is a company me and my wife started in 2011. I um, was getting to a point where um, through the early 2000s, I was making a lot of connections I was meeting a lot of uh, influential people who were on the rise yes. at that time. Yes. Um, I always tell this story about my first big gig was Jay big gig was Jay Z 2003 Fade to Black and there I met a kid from Chicago who had like a pink polo shirt on and he was on the rise and that was Kanye West Ooh. and then through Kanye tour I met this girl from Barbados who was opening for us that ended up being Rihanna. Wow. And then through Rihanna I met this kid from Toronto, up and coming rapper that ended up being Drake. And Jeez. then, you know, from Drake I met like Janet and then through Janet they had the same management. I met wait Justin a minute, wait Timberlake. a minute. Can I, can, we, can I stop you right there before, yeah. before, you, before you jump there? You, you, you invited me to the Janet Jackson tour. Mm -hmm. That was, let me tell you, I'm still saying thank you, uh, thank you, the cage tour. That was the cage yes. tour. So, so I'll never forget the opportunity you gave me just to be, just to be, yeah. you know, I love my wife. Uh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, Jackson, Janet Jackson, but you know, go ahead, Adam, go ahead. No, I was just saying, so through that time, I was making a lot of connections and God was blessing me with these gigs. and. There, it, it became a struggle to maintain it all just by me. Mm. And me and my wife had this idea to come up with a uh, company that was basically a, a, basically a music staffing agency because those artists were saying, hey, even though you can't be there, yes. do you have somebody that you trust Amazing. that can be there? And I said, yeah, let's put this person on. Let's put that person on. And that still... Uh, is a extension of me, yes. and I would still oversee it from afar, and so that birthed um, BBE, Basic Black Entertainment. So for the past 10 years, we have been a music staffing and production agency for tons and tons and tons of artists. Yes. Um, at any point in time, we could have about 200 to 250 wow. people, musicians, out just by, you know, word of mouth or Amazing. my recommendation and it's going well. We've moved into our television space, and Amazing. you know I've been doing a bunch of TV now and television and film. Speaking of speaking of so, TV yes. and film, you you just did the Oscars. Just did the Oscars. Oh my yes, goodness! Been a, what, I mean, what does it feel like to be the music director for the Oscars? Yeah, it, that was an experience um, unlike no other. Wow. I had to um, not only score um, for sixty five piece orchestra. Um, I also had to make sure like the play ons and playoffs are are together and pre recorded and we ended up doing another segment this year um of an all star band on stage. So that Amazing. was myself, Robert Glasper, Travis Barker, and Sheila E. And uh and then you have a concert 
or five mini concerts within wow. the structure of the Oscars because of best song yes. category. Yes. So we had uh, the Queen, Beyonce, we had Reba McIntyre, we had the Disney and Kanto people, um, wow. it, and Billie Eilish. So yeah. it ended up being really, really successful. The ratings were through the roof, and um, that was a blessing. It And that was coming off of some things that I had done earlier in the year from Super Bowl yeah, and, and that, stuff like and that. that. I'm good. I'm <laughs> glad you mentioned that. That's a good segue because, you know, I'll never forget going to the Janet Jackson concert. Yes. And and then going to the Jay-Z tour and and going to the Bad Boy tour. Yes. And, and just telling you, Adam, I said, you know, how can you get to the next level? Because these What's things next? were so big. Yeah. And then you started being the music director for the Super Bowl, yeah. which you gave me the opportunity to go. Our first one was Miami. Miami. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you were the music director for the Super Bowl uh, just recently. Yes. Before the Oscars. Tell me what the Super Bowl experience is like being the music director for, yeah. I want to say, the biggest show on earth. What is I, that like? Yeah, so I was very prepared because this was my fourth Super Bowl to Amazing. be a part of. My first being Justin Timberlake. Second was Shakira and J-Lo, yes. where you came to Miami. Yes. And then um, the pr prior 2021, I did the anthem for Jasmine Sullivan and Eric yes. Church. Um, and so I, got, I have always been able to... Um, soak up the surroundings and take a, a piece from each of my experiences to add to the next one. Amazing. So when I got the call for this Super Bowl from um, Dr. Dre and Jay-Z and um, the people over at Rock Nation and, and Jesse Collins Entertainment, I, I wasn't nervous at all because I had just done a few. Right. And the good thing about the artists that I worked with, it felt like they knew what they wanted to convey. Mm to the world. Yes. It was a historic one because it was the first ever hip hop um, announced halftime yes, as sir. the stars. And so that's big for our culture. That's big for black people. Um, that's big for the community and hip hop in general. Um, and then it was my job to kind of make sure their message translated on television. And um, you know, I think we did it very successfully. You, it. <laughs> you knocked it out with Yes, heart. I think we did that successfully. And, you know, with Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, Snoop, 50 Cent, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, um, we all have now, and that whole experience, you know, yes. probably, you know, 400 to 500 just cast and staff. Wow. We've all become a family based off of wow. that so uh, experience so alone. So and good. even even being in LA and them, them accepting me as an East Coast boy yeah. and you know trusting me to put their music together, I, I don't take it for granted. So I'm I'm really excited for. Um, I was really excited for that. Amazing. Yeah, so good. Well, listen, did you have a good time? Because you had, came to LA. I was there. We had yes. an amazing time. Yes. I, was, I had a VIP seat right there, <laughs> right in back of BBE, Mr. Adam Blackstone. Listen, before we go to commercial break, why don't we take a look at Super Bowl 54 with Adam Blackstone? Yo! A production this big can bring about many challenges and not even music. Right now, Dre came in and we were just talking about how do we get the set built in eight minutes going into the music. So without that, there is no concert. We're worried about how sound is going to be carted onto the field. If our elevator lifts go up and down and in the special set pieces. So once you lock in the music, that's just a small piece of what has to happen of a show this magnitude. This performance is super important to the culture. Hip hop is important to black people. The city of LA, Kendrick told me the other day, he never thought that there would even be a stadium of that magnitude where it is, and let alone him being on the stage there. So he was like, yo, this is big, bro. Thank you for bringing this to light. I think it's important because kids that want to do hip hop or sing soul music, they don't have to be confined to now a small club, a location, or a certain city that embraces them. This is a global stage. The world is going to see us. And I think we're going to get millions of new hip hop fans based off of the execution and the excellence of the show that we have put together. It's just great music and it's going to be a great show. And I'm excited to be the head of that on the music side. Yeah, we did that! 
everything I do right now is for my family and for my children. So that journey taught me to never give up and that, you know, if God has promised something to you, let's not question his timeline. It gives me a sense of purpose as well. I'm not just here for music. I'm here for legacy. I'm here to show them and be an inspiration to not only my children, but hopefully other little kids that you can do whatever you set out to do. I never knew that playing the bass would put me on this stage, if I can be honest. If you work hard, you give your 100 percent at everything that you do, no matter where you're at. Somebody's always watching you. But continue to do great work, because when they're looking for somebody for those positions, they will remember you. Hope you enjoyed this performance. It was huge and a big blessing for us to represent our culture, represent hip hop. Shout out to Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, the Queen, Mary J. Blige for letting us all represent them and their iconic music on that world stage of the Super Bowl. Shout out to my incredible band and crew. Huge, huge shout out to everybody in LA for welcoming us and also letting the culture be number one. We love you. Peace. Welcome back to the Dream Big Show with my guest, Mr. Adam Blackstone. Thank you, Doc. Yes, sir, Adam. Listen, I want to talk to you, man, about our El Bethel days. Church, our boy. Our church yes. days growing up as kids. Do you yes. remember those days on Euclid Avenue? I do. I, I was just talking about how, you know, epic I think those days were. We looked up to y'all, like whoever was on the drums, whoever yes, was on the keyboard, you know, whoever was directing the choir. And then what what I what I think my children miss, that generation, mm -hmm. is when we went to choir rehearsal, which was all day. All day long. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all used to be in choir rehearsal. We were in like a Sunday school type of atmosphere yes. downstairs or in another room in the uh, you know fellowship hall or yes. whatever. And uh, we really learned a lot about church structure and yes. the Bible and just, you know, how to behave in church and stuff like Absolutely. that from like the music ministry yeah. and, and how often we had to be there. And then it just helped, you know, our family was, well, we all became a huge family, yes. but a church family, but like our family was heavily involved. And um, I think like a lot of my um, uh, music, aptitude came from just church in general. Absolutely. I think about the title of like musical director and I didn't really know what that was. As I look back, I could say like, you know, my dad was the first musical director. Yes. I could look at Norma and John yes. and Aunt Betty yes. and you and, you know, watching Devoted come with Vernon. I was like, oh, okay, like those are the, the leaders of Absolutely. what's happening on that stage or on that pulpit or whatever at the time. Yeah. So, it's, it's, you know, El Bethel was great, was great. And I think even having a pillar like uh, Reverend Gaines, um, you know, somebody that we looked up to as well, that was super duper family oriented. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've never seen him like not come visit yes. everybody. everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was the <laughs> ultimate family community yes. pastor. Period. And, you know, speaking of that, Adam, you know, just talking about church, you know, church is where we found our first mentors. Yes. Where we first learned, like you said, to there were certain things that we were taught in church that maybe you weren't taught in school or, you know, church was our yeah. playground is where we learned, you know, yes. etiquette and on so many other things, not All just that. through music, you know? There's sayings and songs that, you know, my cousins and us still to this day, we sing and <laughs> laugh at each other because they were ingrained in us from seven, eight, nine years old. Exactly. You know what I mean? And like, exactly. um, I still, when I come to Trenton, people still remind me of like Betty's Babies. Yes. And, yes. Um, you know, something that I kind of don't remember, but I like, you know, lives in infamy, you yes. know, like us. Aunt Betty having the 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 these smaller kids be the new choir for That's like a day right. or whatever that was, Absolutely. and uh, and then you know just relationships too. Yes, we all, my mom down to me, have and then even you know, um, the younger kids under me, Camry and Shay, and like we all have relationships from those That's churches, whether that true. be through our parents or whatever. That's you know exactly what I mean? True. So, so true. Um, it's it's you know black church helped shape 
you know, who a lot of who we are. So true. And I'm thankful for that experience every day, for sure. For yeah. sure. And you know, it's so funny. I, I can always remember one thing that's so vivid in my mind is when I used to play the drums at the church and having you sit, sit there, right there, sit yeah. there and watch me, then, me, then you sitting on my lap, you're, you're, and then you sitting in the chair and couldn't even, your foot couldn't touch the pedal, wow. but you were playing those drums and then watching you play a keyboard and then, yep. you know, you becoming um, the ultimate uh, Grammy, when you went to Grammy school, bass school, yes. um, with, uh, through high school and seeing your progression from church for sure. To, uh, the Philadelphia of the Arts. Yep. Um, you U know, arts. And yep. then, you know, Willingboro High School, of course, and then Philadelphia of the Arts, and then seeing you uh, just progress in your music. Yeah. You know, we always, I just wanted to highlight that because the foreground of that started from the church. Absolutely. I, when I went to, I remember the first day of college. Um, and also, church taught us that. You know, us as a culture, we were excellent. Yes. We yes, were the best. Yes. And so, and even growing up in Willingboro, you know, for me to go to Willingboro High School, it was a, such an affluent black community. Yes. And it was like college was the real world for me. I found out that I was the minority. I found yes, out that, yes. you know, things weren't always for me how I thought my adolescence was. Yes. But because I had it ingrained in me that we were excellent and we were great. Yes. Couldn't nobody tell me nothing. And, and even my playing at a jazz school specifically was heavily influenced by church. So even the teachers and stuff could always see that something was different. Like how how is he playing? Why is he playing like that? Not necessarily good or be better or worse, but yeah. just it was different. And different. a lot of that was from hearing what I heard at church and then me applying it to what they were teaching me as well. So I always looked at church as a form of school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Life school, music school, Bible school. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. And like I said, I, you know, my father-in-law being a still a Baptist pastor, yeah. it's like we try to get down there as much as we can because I want my kids to have. It's nothing like the black church that's experience. That's right. That's right. Period. You learn so much. You, you learn know? so much. Yeah. You know, as much CCM as we like to sing yeah. now, and <laughs> as much uh, online church and stuff like that. It's nothing like being in that atmosphere and being in the midst of the Lord, and, and like that has helped shape you know tons and tons of incredible not just musicians but. Scholars, Absolutely. athletes, you know, Absolutely. politicians, like that church experience is, is is a big deal. Yeah, God first of all things. Right? All things, God, God over everything. Yeah. yeah, so Adam, you know, I just wanted to just fall back to and just kind of continue a little bit of the conversation and talk to you about, you know, what it's like in your mindset to be the music director to the most <laughs> incredible stars. I mean, yeah. the list goes on. I mean, Justin Timberlake, Janet Jackson, uh, P. Diddy, yeah. Jay-Z, I mean, Kanye West. You know, what is it like to, to and, and sometimes let me tell you, you, I'll talk to you, and you're doing three and four jobs at the same time. Like, Absolutely. this must be incredible. So what yeah. is it like to just have this experience and to prepare for such artists? Yeah, I, I think that I always have been a good preparation person. Understood. So no matter who I was working with or for, I looked at it as let me give them my all. They're hiring me for a job. Uh, it just so happens the job is super fly and yeah. banging <laughs> and blessed to have some perks with it. But at the same time, it is a job. Yes. And I try to tell the younger generation as well, like, you know, don't get caught up in what we do, but how you do it. You yes. have to do it with excellence because if I let one of those big names down, that will trickle down in our Absolutely. industry. It's a very, as big as it may seem by looking at Instagram or Twitter or television, it's a very small community of people who do their job well. Yes. And I want to have always have been at the forefront of that if I could. Amazing. Um, but I look at it as work. I think that one of the things that got me to the level that I'm at um, is because I have given each of those artists, whether it be a local artist in Philly, yes whether it be me starting with Jill Scott, you know, who was local at the time, but blew up to this superstar, or whether it be me going to a superstar like a Justin yes. or, or a Diddy, I want to give them my 100% all Absolutely. the time. And, and also knowing that they have a vision yes. 
and it's my job to bring their vision out. I don't want to impart myself in their vision. Right. Tell right, me right. what you like. It's my job to kind of twist it up. You're like make, the creative director at the same time. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and and so many different titles come under musical director. Exactly. Yes, you know, sir. whether that be creative, I find myself in dance rehearsal sometimes, wow. making sure that I'm doing hits that match with the dancers' sure. hits. I find myself in lighting meetings. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that as we grow with the music, the lights Lighting, and the stage sure. grows. Uh, and then just the production role as well to say who should do what. I've done that um, just in the past with, you know, whether it be like a Juneteenth celebration and they yeah. say, hey, we have this idea. And now you flush it out. Amazing. Um, so it's it's been great. It's been great. I'm so excited for um my past and i'm even more excited for the future and you know who that next up and coming artist is you have really paid it forward i mean just think well when i think about the countless musicians that bbe has really uh, hired mm -hmm. and have given opportunity uh bbe has been a blessing to so many artists yeah. and just i mean to all of us yeah. to get to witness excellence at its finest so com i commend you Thank and you. kudos to you and your whole team at bbe basic black entertainment yes. for sure i think that um that's one of my main even like ministries not to get deep but it's like i want to make sure everybody tries to have the best position uh to be put in to make their own path and Absolutely. to be successful Absolutely. and um you know, somebody did it for me and somebody did it for them prior to that. So if I can do that for uh, the next generation and, you know, keep nepotism popping and, you know, have the family on as well Amazing. and just do <laughs> even do personal projects. You know, I love working with you for as long as we work on music. I want to work on my own stuff. And, you know, every family member that ever needed anything musically from me, it's like, we, we let's do it. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of your own stuff, man, yes. we need a project from Adam it's Blackstone. It's coming soon. Coming. It's coming soon. It's yes, coming soon. I yes. got I have a concept for it, Legacy, uh, called Legacy, and um, really just getting back to my even jazz roots with a little bit of gospel, a little bit of R&B, blues, yeah. and... Um, but yeah, it's coming. It's coming. You heard it here. It's coming. It's coming. It's That's coming. right. The project from Adam Blackstone, man. Listen, we are so thankful and thankful. so grateful to you for being here on oh. the Dream Big Show. Yes. Yes. Any and listen, I just wanted to tell you, yes, Dream Big, Trust God. You have always said that. It's manifesting already. Um, just to see everything that God is doing in your life for the family, for the brand. It's yeah. just, it's a huge inspiration. So continue to do that. We need this platform. We always support you and we love you. Thank you. Hey, right. that's right. Adam Blackstone, everybody. Give it up for him. Yeah. Make sure you stay tuned for who's up next. We have some exciting guests coming. You don't want to miss it on the Dream Big Show.